the connection that Allah is making in Surah Al-Mulk between His authority and His mercy is that Allah has everything, yet He chooses mercy. When we have a little bit of this world, we choose cruelty. Mm-hmm. And that test has been repeated multiple times uh, throughout history with different aqwam, with different nations and, and tribes and individuals. Right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for you. Are you recognizing that plan and what are you doing to live according to that plan to the best of your ability? And I read a story about Umar ibn Sa'id, the, the African slave who was a slave in America. He wrote a diary, mm. but in that diary, he puts the entire Surah Al-Mulk as an introduction mm. to his life. SubhanAllah. Before he spoke about his life, his dilemma as a slave in this country. He puts the entire Surah in Arabic. Mm. But when I look at the surah, I see perhaps, you know, Umar al Sa'id was a Muslim scholar. He was a hafiz of Quran. He mm. knew the Arabic very well. Perhaps maybe he was explaining the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm. that no human being could claim any dominion over any other human being. Mm. Wow. It is only Allah who has a dominion. So in a way, it's like it's a rejecting slavery on the basis mm. of Surah Al-Mulk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Welcome back to Quran 30 for 30. The question from yesterday's juz, who is the woman referred to in Surah Al-Mujadira? Go ahead and put her name down, inshaAllah ta'ala. Answer in the comments below. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Ameen. As we get now to the 29th night of Ramadan, I want to remind you all, bidnillah, as Ramadan is fleeting away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us all, to please, inshaAllah ta'ala, put in your last donations to Yaqeen, bidnillah. You know, alhamdulillah, we uh, hope that you've seen the upgrade in quality constantly inshallah ta'ala and the way that yaqeen is always rising to meet the needs ta'ala in real time and we need our community we need all of you that have been benefiting from yaqeen the yaqeen family to inshallah ta'ala make sure that you're a part of helping us grow with all of the other good efforts that are out there all of the good institutions all of the great work that's necessary right now in the relief industry and all over we ask you inshallah ta'ala that before you let Ramadan pass, even if you've made a donation, by the way. Go ahead and make another donation, inshallah ta'ala, uh, to keep the work going, bit in the And with that, we're almost there. We got Sheikh Abdullah Adur, alhamdulillah, as always. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect him and preserve him. Mm-hmm. And we have Sheikh Maurid, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Ameen, from the, uh, the warm state, uh, <laughs> <laughs> from sunny Minnesota, right? Yeah, he won one month of the year, Sheikh. Warm hearts, Marid, warm hearts, warm hearts. Warm hearts, that's true, mashallah. Warm hearts, mashallah. Sheikh Marid Kevin Had, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Allah yabarak feek. Alhamdulillah. Obviously from Azlul Bakr here. Uh, alhamdulillah, we've, we've had you the last uh, couple of years as well. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us from your knowledge, bidna nahi ta'ala, and we look forward to uh, continuing the dialogue bidna nahi ta'ala on the Qur'an. But how are you, Sheikh? How's everything? Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Nah. Alhamdulillah. Doing well. Alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Good, good. Zakamallah khair. How is Ramadan with you? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> we ask Allah for acceptance, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. 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 With that, inshallah, let's go ahead and get started. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Salat Samar Rasulullah. Nawar Adi wa Sahbi Manwala. Subhanallah. In Juz 28, we were talking about the Munafiqun. We were talking about the hypocrites. We were talking about people that see. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they flee to it versus those who turn away from it. So Surah Al-Jumu'ah, right? People who, وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا إِنْ فَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوا كَقَائِمًا People that see something of this world and they chase that thing of this world. And what chases them is the destruction of this world and the destruction in the next life. Whereas those who rush towards the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they have their success found in this life and in the next. وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Right, even when you go back to work, even when you go back to harvesting your crops, even when you go back to your trade, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frequently so that you may find success in this life and in the next. There's a powerful connection between that juz and coming to Juz 29 now and the end of Surah Al-Mulk. Just the last ayah, of Surah Al-Mulk where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَاءُكُمْ غَوْرًا فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَا أَمْعِينَ Allah says consider this قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ Say consider this, listen. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to take your water and allow it to sink into the earth. You know imagine you know the, the scene of people trying to find water if water ceased to come from the heavens and it sunk into the earth. 
you know, I think about this in terms of like the gold rushes and, you know, people trying to discover something in the ground and they're trying to strike gold, right? Or strike oil or whatever it may be, right? Imagine if water was taken away from us and you could only find it by digging into the earth and it was only in a, in a few places of the world. Imagine how desperate we would look. And subhanAllah, we also see what happens when drought hits a people. No matter how powerful your nation is, if drought hits, you're in trouble. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Qul an asbaha What if that's taken away from you? What if you were to have to dig into the earth to find water? Imagine how vulnerable you would be as humanity. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for those who indeed can't find clean water. So even the most powerful nations on earth are humbled at that point no matter what technology they have, if they don't have water. So who's going to bring you that flowing water? Now compare this, or, or rather build on this when you go to Surah Al-Qalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the first group of people as a parable for the people of Mecca rejecting the Prophet sallallahu <laughs> And Allah says in uh, verse 17 that indeed we have tested them, meaning the people of Mecca, as we tested the owners of the garden, Ashab al Jannah, when they swore that they would surely harvest all of its fruit in the early morning. And so you have the children of a righteous, generous man who have inherited this garden. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with abundance, right? the poor and other people naturally become dependent upon them. And they start to take from the excess, the abundance of their crops. Now these people are not starving. They're not running out of food. They're not running out of, of water. They're not running out of the flowing garden, the flowing water in their gardens. They're not running out of any of their ni'mah, but they start to become resentful to those that are taking away their goods and those that are chipping away at their worldly possessions. And so they come up with a plan to do what? To basically hold back their crops from other people, hold back their crops from the poor, hold back the excess that they had that used to benefit the poor because they thought they were in ownership of it. So SubhanAllah, in the previous surah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, what if I took away water from you? What if water was taken away from you? And indeed, water is in abundance on earth, but there are still people that die because they don't have access to clean water. What if Allah Azza wa Jal took away water from us? How desperate would we all be? And here you have this group of people that are thinking that they're in a position to hold back the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from other people because they falsely attribute those blessings to themselves. And as a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, um, you know, uh, the, the destruction of that garden and the regret that the people have in Surah Al-Qalam. And obviously it's the entire page. And so you can sort of go through the expressions of regret and the expressions of self-blame at that point and when they sort of turn against each other, uh, when they said, miskin, let's hold back all of this from the poor. The next surah, Surah Al-Haqqa, SubhanAllah. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions two things. He mentions the destruction of the people of Ad with the wind. سَخَرَ عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وَثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّامٍ حُسُومًا so Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the destruction of the people of Thamud and Ad, and what is it? This huge wind that comes and destroys them. So it's interesting because Allah says, what if I withheld water from you? What if a drought comes to you? And in the case of the people of the garden, right? Uh, something comes, a fire comes, whatever it is, and destroys all of the crops. Or a heavy wind comes and destroys everyone, right? Destroys everything that they've harvested. Now this is where it becomes really interesting. You then have this whole elucidation on those who receive their books in their right hand, may Allah make us amongst them. Mm. And those who receive their books in their left hand, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being amongst them. And what does Allah Azza describe the people of, of the right hand as? One of their first rewards is قُطُوفُهَا <laughs> دَانِيَ Their fruits are right there. <laughs> Just, it's right in front of them. What people chase in this world and what people withhold in this world, it's right in front of them. They just go ahead and grab their fruits and they don't have to worry about anything from that. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just provides it to them. And then Allah Azza wa Jal, as He tells us about the people of the hellfire, the people of the left, they can't find water, they can't find drink. They're, they're looking for just one sip of water in the hellfire. And finally, dear brothers and sisters, SubhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal gives the explanation, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا لَا يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ وَلَا يَحُضُّ عَلَىٰ طَعَامٍ مِسْكِينَ 
that these were people that did not believe in their great Lord, nor did they used to encourage the feeding of the, the poor and taking care of the poor. فَلَيْسَ لَهُ الْيَوْمَ هَا هُنَا حَمِيمٌ وَلَا طَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ غِسْلِينَ So what do they have now? They can drink their pus, they can drink their own blood, and they have no friend, they have no provision. So you can see the, the trend from al-mulk to al-qalam to now al-haqa, the reality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who understand the reality of this life and chase the best of the hereafter. So the, the, the lesson, dear brothers and sisters, chase this life and destruction will follow in this life and the next. Chase the hereafter and blessing will follow in this life and the next. May Allah make us amongst the people of Al-Akhirah, the children of the hereafter, not the children of this world. Allahumma ameen. And I'll pass it on to Shaykh Abdullah, inshaAllah. Hayakum Allah, Shaykh. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la amma ba'd. As he mentioned this life, what I want to talk about is the creation of life, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings life to creation, and in particular, the human being. In the chapter of Qiyamah, verses number 36 through 40, to the very end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks rhetorical questions, and a rhetorical question is a question to where you know the answer. You will find this throughout the Quran. Allah will ask questions that the human being, Muslim, non-Muslim, knows because they have this human GPS or this motherboard within them called the fitra, the natural inclination, that which is present within them, that knows that there is a creator, they recognize that there is something greater than them that has authority over them and full control. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks these particular questions to establish the reality of lordship, being that he possesses these great qualities of creation, strength, honor, mercy, love, all of these are perfect without any room for imperfection. But the human beings in all forms of creation are imper imperfect by default, automatically, naturally. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the question for us to ponder over, He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks firstly, He says, does man think that he will be left alone unquestioned? And this, this word suda literally means a, a camel that is wandering aimlessly. Well, I, this is so important nowadays. With so much information, as they say, the wealth of information creates a poverty of attention. You don't know, you, you're not focused. You don't know what to really prioritize in life. And many of times our youth, subhanAllah, they don't know what they want to do in life to where it could lead to a hedonistic lifestyle. Do as you please. When they face a tragedy, they may question evil. When they face a tragedy, they question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to where it could lead to, why do I even worship a God? Nothing is really happening in my favor. But when they take a step back and look at the qualities of their creator and recognizing that he is present and that there is intentionality in his or her creation, there is intentionality in his or her presence. When they see that there were children that by the permission of Allah, they did not come into this world from a miscarriage or whatever the case may be, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for you. Are you recognizing that plan and what are you doing to live according to that plan to the best of your ability? So suda means aimlessly. Does, does mankind think that we just created him and just left him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Was he not a drop of ejaculated fluid? Was he not a drop of ejaculated fluid? Starting to mention the process of gestation of embryology, that meaning that there was a process for him to be born. And this process takes place with all human beings, all mammals. This takes place with all of creation, that there is this process that takes place with the process of being born and, and brought into this world. A drop of ejaculated fluid. Did he not think that he was a drop of ejaculated fluid? Then he became a clot and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it into a living body with body parts, showing that there are stages that take place, which is a proof of intentionality, which is a proof of a system, which is a proof of a creator. He is the one that creates and the one that fashions and the one that gives the structure. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is intentional with our creation, with us as human beings and with all of creation. But for us to think here and to remember that you did not come in this world, abathan, suda. There was, there was as though there was no intentionality behind your presence, you being born, you growing up, and the things that you face is to remember these particular questions. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, after he mentions the fact that he has created us and give us proportion body parts, he says, then he has given him a pair, male or female, male or female. See, within the rahim, within the womb of the mother, that there is a male or a female. Soon after a couple of weeks, there will be a male or female determined by the body parts we see from embryology and understanding within the womb of the mother, we will determine either this gender or and only that gender. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes and says, أَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يُحْيِيَ الْمَوْتَىٰ Does not then the one that has the power to bring uh, back the dead to life, يُحْيِيَ الْمَوْتَىٰ as some scholars mention, when the baby is in the womb of the mother, that is the first stage of death and then bringing them to life. And then the other death, as we know, the death of when the soul leaves the body and then the next life uh, will be the second life. As is mentioned in also, You have caused us to die twice and you have given us life twice. So we admit our sins. Is there a way out? The shahid, the highlighted portion here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing at the very end, this last question, is the one that brought you to life, bring the dead to life, it, 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 does he not deserve to be worshipped? The ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he has the ability to bring you into this world, doesn't he have the ability for other things? So let's never belittle or domesticate the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize that his greatness was is and will always be present. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us aware of his greatness Amen. and allow that to shine through in our belief in him and in our actions. Faithful Shaykh al Mashkun. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alladhi bi ni'matihi tatimmu salihat. Alhamdulillah. Uh, it's great to be back with Yaqeen for Quran 30 for 30. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the month of Ramadan, the month of the Quran. Just 29. Uh, it's a great Jews. Uh, I believe the entire Jews is a Makki uh, Jews. And subhanAllah, the beginning you find uh, the first surah in Jews 29 is Surah Al-Mulk, the dominion. And subhanAllah, that's a surah that speaks about the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a surah that encapsulates the attributes of Allah of majesty and beauty. You find Tabarak al biyadihi al-mulk, which shows majesty and power at the same time, you find in the surah the name of Ar-Rahman, the merciful, coming back again and again in the surah. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا تَرَى فِي خَلْقِ الرَّحْمَانِ مِنْ تفاوت. In the universe, if you go out and you contemplate the creation of the heavens and the earth, you will never find any discrepancy or any shortcomings in it, in the creation of the most merciful. Then in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to look up do they not see the bird on top of them or over them on the sky? Safatin uh, spreading and folding their wings. And then subhanAllah, look what comes after that. Ma illa rahman None is holding the bird on top of us on the sky except the most merciful. Innahu bi kulli shay'in basir. That indeed he sees everything. This is a great surah that speaks about life and death, the universe. It also speaks about guidance and gratitude. The ayah that we find in the guidance is the ayah, yeah, When you look at the, the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is giving us an example to contemplate and to think about. The comparison here is look at someone who is looking down, who's upside down, doesn't have the right orientation, the right direction. Is he equal to someone who is on the straight path? They're not. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presenting to us in this ayah, the importance and the utility of having hidayah, guidance. 
for you to be a believer, for you to be a Muslim, for you to have the honor to listen to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is speaking to us through the Quran. This is a ni'mah that we have to appreciate. This is a ni'mah that requires gratitude. And we find in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ هُوَ الَّذِي أَنْشَأَكُمْ وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ Allah is the one who initiated you, He created you, and He gave you the sight, the intellect. He gave you every faculty for you to understand and to comprehend. But then Allah says, قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ Little do you give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we find guidance and gratitude in the same ayat. At the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to declare his absolute trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that in the early days in Mecca, I mean, the da'wah of Islam was not easy. There were threats, persecutions, and difficulties. It was the most precarious moment in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. But Allah is telling the Prophet ﷺ, قُلْ Say, declare, tell people, قُلْ هُوَ rahman Allah is the most merciful. هُوَ rahman آمَنَّ bih. We believe in him. وَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْنَا and we put our trust on him. فَسَتَعْلَمُونَ مَنْ هُوَ فِي ضَلَالِ مُبِينَ Soon you will come to know who is, who is misguided, who is astray. Subhanallah, you see in this ayat of Surah Al-Mulk, many topics. But the one thing we find in this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the believers that Allah has the absolute dominion and that he has the mulk of everything. And in that mulk is also associated with his rahmah and his mercy. And the surah also reminds us to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the guidance of al-Islam. Therefore we say alhamdulillah ala ni'matil Islam. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the favor of al-Islam because this is wallahi the ni'mah that will never expire. And it's a ni'mah that we renew in the month of Ramadan. هذا وصل اللهم وسلم على نبينا محمد. جزاك الله خير شيخ مريد. سبحان الله. One thing that is very clear as you go through the juz is Allah سبحانه وتعالى reminds us multiple times in this juz in particular that you were nothing. هل أتى على الإنسان حين من الدهر لم يكن شيئا مذكورا. You were not even mentioned before. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم. Allah mentioned he created death and he created life uh, to show you as the scholars mentioned that death actually preceded life, meaning the default, you know, we, we think the default is life and that's why we look mm -hmm. at death as so evil at times, like why, you know, why did death happen? Well, why did life happen in the first place? Your default was lifelessness and then Allah gave you life, right? And then Surah Al-Haqqa, uh, Al right? Uh, Allah Azza wa mentioning, you know, um, people that forgot where they came from. Uh, as, as communities. Surah Al-Qiyamah, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going through the whole stages of embryology. It's really interesting because what it reminds me is, uh, you know, sometimes you see someone who succeeds and when they succeed, they lose all of their character when they have success. Mm -hmm. And then the words are what? He forgot where he came from. Remember your humble beginnings. And when they say, remember your humble beginnings, remember your old neighborhood, remember mm -hmm. your old friends, remember what you used to have to dress with and you used to have to eat and Remember this and remember that. Well, you know, Allah is saying that most people have forgotten where they came from, right? And they've forgotten who they came from. And that's why the default for them, if they don't attribute everything that they have back to their creator, is arrogance. Whereas subhanAllah is thinking when Shaykh Marid is talking about the connection that Allah is making in Surah Al-Mulk between his authority and his mercy, is that Allah has everything, yet he chooses mercy. When we have a little bit of this world, we choose cruelty. Mm -hmm. And that test has been repeated multiple times uh, throughout history with different aqwam, with different nations and, and tribes and individuals, right? Yeah, That's why it's important to, subhanAllah, to always be a person of the akhirah, to try your best to always look at everything, you know, as, as a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that everything is an ayah, like, you know, that Allah is communicating through that. And that's a huge opportunity for the believer in the divine, the believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Firstly, knowing who he is and who he is not. 
And then when you go through life, you attribute to say, okay, how is this a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How does this remind me about Allah? And you know, when you were talking about, you know, don't forget where you came from, subhanAllah, we make it analogous with, you know, we led Mathal al-A'la and Allah is a much greater example. How would we feel if someone was ungrateful to something that you've done for them or your, your community has done for them from twofold? Because subhanAllah, we may feel bad or may have some type of envy or dislike of that person not showing gratitude to our actions. But at the same time, realizing that what you've done for them is only by the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also that person that's been given something, they should realize, yes, I should show gratitude to that person, which is, a, is in essence showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as long as my intention is there. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, looking at it on a much greater scale, none of this would be present except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's so many opportunities for us to overlook ourselves and look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah is putting things in front of you to see how will you respond to that? And that is our ultimate responsibility. And that's why with these beautiful verses, it just reminds us ultimately of Tawheed, really the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether in his lordship, when asking these rhetorical questions, when showing us the reality of the situation in the world, the reality of human beings, past, present, and future. And then for us, after remembering that, as they say, that it, it will require from us that universal responsibility just to say, God, thank you. And how do you thank him with that system that he's given us, primarily with the Prophet, only with the Prophet. So just putting that in the proper perspective and to looking at, subhanAllah, it may seem difficult, but it's very, very, mashallah, simple when looking at the creator of the heavens and the earth and looking at the signs that he's put in front of us. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah subhanAllah. Uh, when I look at Surah Al-Mulk, uh, one of the things I, I see is the trust, having tawakul mm -hmm. on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I read a story about Umar ibn Sa'id, uh, the African slave who was a slave in America. He wrote a diary mm -hmm. uh, titled Hayat, Life, in Arabic. It was recently translated into English, but in that diary he puts the entire Surah Al-Mulk as an introduction mm -hmm. to his life. SubhanAllah. Yeah. Mm. And people don't know why he put that surah, why he chose Surah Al-Mulk before he spoke about his life, his dilemma as a slave in this country. He puts the entire surah in Arabic, mm. the entire surah to mulk in Arabic, and then he speaks about his, uh, his life. Uh, so, but when I look at the surah, I see perhaps, you know, Umar al Sa'id was a Muslim scholar. He was a hafiz of Quran. He mm. knew the Arabic very well. Perhaps maybe he was explaining the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm. that no human being could claim any dominion over any other human being. Mm. Wow. It is only Allah who has a dominion. So in a way it's like, it's a rejecting slavery on the basis mm. of a Surah Al-Mulk. SubhanAllah, mm. yeah. interesting, Allah. SubhanAllah. Yeah, I didn't know that, Shaykh. It's, like Allah it's, 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 it's almost like as you're kind of getting to the end of the Quran, you know, the beginning started off with a claim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us the story of Adam alayhi salam, the story of shaitan. The more you recognize who your blessings came from, the more humble you'll be. The more you recognize or the more you see yourself as the source of your own power mm -hmm. and blessing, the more arrogant you will become. And then, you know, I, I think of that original conversation, mm -hmm. the angels were saying, Ya Allah, are you putting in this earth, are you going to put people that will spread corruption, spill blood? And when Allah says, Inni ma la I know that which you don't know, as many of the scholars say, that means that there are people, there are descendants from this creation that will make the entire human enterprise worth it with the beauty of their worship, mm -hmm. and the prophets and the salihin. So at this point now, you've seen the full spectrum when you get to just 29. Those that forgot where they came from, and hence they ruined where they're going, and those mm -hmm. that knew exactly where they came from, and so they built here, and they built for their hereafter. And you find these prophets and these righteous people, and they're far and few. And, and it's interesting because Allah says that most of them will be ungrateful. Most of them will be arrogant. And I think if you proportionately took the stories of nations in the Quran mm -hmm. and through history, you find the majority are indeed arrogant. The majority <laughs> indeed forget where they come from and they repeat destruction. But then you got those few bright spots mm -hmm. that make it all worth it. And it's always a common theme. They know biyadihil mulk. They know that in his hand is all dominion. 
when Sulaiman alayhi salam says, uh, you know, uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a customized uh, mm-hmm. kingdom. Mulkan la yanbaghi li ahadim min ba'di. Allah gives him the greatest kingdom of all time, the greatest mulk of all time. But he uses that all in praise of Allah yes. subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so long as you maintain that humility, you know, it's it's always going to, inshallah ta'ala, channel towards good things. Yeah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance. Jazakallah khair, yeah. Shaykh Mawlid. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you both. May Allah azza wa jal allow us all to be people who have recognized this Ramadan where we came from and bi ta'ala give us where we hope to go. Al-Firdaus al-A'la, Allahumma ameen. Barakallah feekum to all of you for tuning in. We'll see you all tomorrow, inshaAllah ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.